2020 Mentor Channel. Welcome for this presentation on the operational use of the TCAS. Today we all agree on the benefits of the TCAS in terms of safety and because we are continuously improving the design on our aircraft in order to further enhance this safety, after the TCAS Change 7.1 we have designed at Airbus the APFD TCAS function, this was in 2010. However, in our daily support, we have some feedback from you operators showing that you need more information, more clarification regarding these functions. So, in this presentation, I will recall to you what is the operational use of the TCAS and I will highlight the differences in terms of procedure but also in terms of training between the aircraft equipped with the standard TCAS and the aircraft equipped with the APFD TCAS function. In this presentation, after a quick reminder about the TCAS Change 7, I will provide you a refresher concerning the APFD TCAS function. Then we will speak about the procedure to apply depending if the aircraft is equipped with the standard TCAS or with the APFD TCAS function. And finally, we will have a look at the most frequently asked questions. So let's start with the TCAS Change 7. The TCAS Change 7 was the first mandated since the year 2000 as per ICAO and also as per the EASA uh, AU Ops regulation and the FAR regulation. Then we have developed at Airbus the TCAS Change 7.1 which has a European mandate to be installed on the aircraft that are produced from March 2012 and also to be retrofitted on all the other aircraft before December 2015. In addition, the IKO has also recommended the installation of the Change 7.1 on all the aircraft that are produced from January 2014 and to be retrofitted before the end of 2017 on all the other aircraft. So what are the main differences between these two standards? With the TCAS Change 7.0, when the TCAS trigger a resolution advisory adjust vertical speed adjust, it requires to adjust the vertical speed in order to fly within the green zone of the TCAS vertical speed. For example, here, the pilot must reduce the vertical speed, but in fact, the array does not clearly say what is uh, exactly the maneuver and does not indicate the sense of the correction, meaning reducing or increasing the vertical speed. Therefore, with the TCAS Change 7.1, we have changed this callout and we have replaced it by level off, level off and all the other callouts remain the same between these two standards. So when this array is triggered, the pilots must level off, meaning that they must reduce the vertical speed to zero feet per minute. So this modification ensures a better understanding of the oral alert and a better understanding of what is the action that is required. Of course, this standard provides others enhancements which are documented in Airbus World. This one is the most visible for you, flight crews. So let's now have a look at the APFD TCAS function. We have developed the APFD TCAS function in 2010 following some in-service experience that have shown the need to further enhance the aircraft response to array and also the need to reduce the crew workload and the stress that was induced by the TCAS alert. The principle of the APFD TCAS function is to integrate the TCAS orders within the autoflight in order to provide a vertical speed guidance in line with the array alert. 
since 2010 we have presented this function during various flight operation and training and safety events so we really encourage you to get a tour on Airbus World if you need more information regarding this function. So now that we have in mind the TCAS and the APFD TCAS principle, let's focus on the procedure to apply. First, on ground, the Airbus recommendation is to set the TCAS on standby in order to avoid frequency saturation and also to avoid disturbing the air traffic control. Then, before the takeoff, following the takeoff or lineup clearance and before entering the runway, the Airbus SOP requires to set the TCAS mode on TAA ray as recalled in the before takeoff checklist. So here the idea is to use the TCAS as an additional means in order to check that the approach path is clear of traffic, so this increases the situational awareness. And then, after landing, the same recommendation as for the cockpit preparation, TCAS is on standby to avoid frequency saturations. This SOP procedure applies for both the TCAS standard and also the APFD TCAS. Now in flight, we are going to see that in case of TA or RA, the procedure to apply are different on the standard TCAS and on the APFD TCAS. On aircraft equipped with the standard TCAS, the pilot must disconnect the autopilot and the FD bars in order to follow the TCAS orders. The main difference with the APFD TCAS function is that in case of array, the pilot will have the FD bars automatically engaged and will monitor the maneuver with autopilot and uh, auto trust engage. So this is what we are going to review now thanks to an operational scenario. Let's assume that the aircraft is in cruise while a traffic advisory triggers. At that time, no immediate action is requested, only to monitor the intruder on the ND. With the standard TCAS, the PF calls out TCAS I have control. And for the APFD TCAS equipped aircraft, the PF will call out TCAS blue, because on the FMA, the TCAS blue indication has appeared in order to, uh, to indicate to the flight crew that the APFD TCAS mode is available and that it will engage if the TA changes into an array. And at that time, if the auto trust was disconnected, it is set to on. Now, if the TA changes into a preventive resolution advisory, for example here, monitor vertical speed. The procedure in this case is to maintain the current vertical speed. With the standard TCAS, the pilot must disconnect the autopilot and the FD bars in order to maintain the vertical speed within the green area. With the APFD TCAS function, the TCAS mode engages, meaning that the blue indication changes into a green boxed indication on the FMA. So the PF calls out the FMA change, TCAS, and must keep the autopilot, the FD bars, and the auto trust on. Here, the pilot will monitor that the vertical speed remains out of the red area of the vertical speed scale. Then, if the vertical speed goes into the red area of the scale, the TCAS will trigger a corrective array, for example here, climb, climb. In this case, the procedure is to exit the red vertical speed area. With the standard TCAS, the pilot must increase the vertical speed in order to reach the green area of the vertical speed scale. And with the APFD TCAS function, 
the pilot will monitor that the vertical speed gets out of the red area and remain within the green area of the speed scale. Then, when clear of conflict oral alert sounds, the procedure is to announce the clear of conflict and notify the ATC. With the standard TCAS, the pilot will resume the standard operation, so reconnecting the autopilot and the FD bars. With the APFD TCAS function, the TCAS mode automatically disengages and will revert to a vertical speed mode. The vertical speed target becomes plus or minus 1000 feet per minute in order to lead the aircraft toward the altitude that was previously selected and the TCAS mode remains armed as long as the intruder remains within the TA range. So, to summarize, we have seen that the main difference between the standard TCAS and the APFD TCAS is in case of array. With the standard TCAS, the autopilot will continue to follow the flight plan, so to follow the TCAS order, the pilot must disconnect the autopilot and the FD bars. Whereas with the APFD TCAS function, in case of preventive or corrective array, the autopilot automatically follows the TCAS orders and the pilot must monitor the TCAS maneuver having autopilot on, FD on and auto trust on. For aircraft that are equipped with the APFD TCAS function, our training recommendations are the following. If the TCAS blue appears on the FMA, this means that your aircraft is equipped with the APFD TCAS function. In that case, check that the auto truss is on and consider the use of the autopilot and the FD bears. Then, in case of array, preventive or corrective, if the autopilot is on the PF monitors and maneuvers, and if the autopilot was disconnected, the PF will follow the FD bars and monitor the vertical speed in order to fly within the green zone of the vertical speed scale. So the main message is that if TCAS Blue appears on the FMA, consider the use of the automation. If not, be prepared to fly the TCAS maneuver manually. Here I'm recalling you some of the training means that are available to brief you about the APFD TCAS function. First, the training media available. You have to contact your key account manager to get them. Then the training devices that are also up to date. The APT trainer and the full flight simulator cover the basic function and also the case where the APFD TCAS function is faulty and where the pilot has to fly manually the TCAS maneuver. So the message for you is to consider the simulator retrofit with and without the automation in order to fully address your training for the APFD TCAS function. Let's now review some of the frequently asked questions. The first question is when should we use TA array and when should we use TA only? TA only should be used in some abnormal situations such as engine failure or flight with landing gear down where the aircraft performances are degraded. TA only can be also used upon airline policy in some specific airport where some unwanted inappropriate arrays have been identified, for example, closely spaced parallel runways, converging runways and so on. And for all other cases, TA array should be used. Another frequent question that we have is, can the TCAS be reset? On ground, it is possible to reset the TCAS as per the system reset table of the QRH. However, in flight, the TCAS reset is not allowed because we have no spurious nav TCAS fault. In case of TCAS fault displayed in flight, it would not be possible to recover the system. 
So let's review now the documentation covering the TCAS. In this slide, you can see most of the available documentation about the TCAS, some presentation made during some Airbus events that are available on the Airbus World Portal. You can also refer to the operational documentation, the FCOM, the FCTM, the MMEL, and also some training media. We have also the getting to grips with surveillance brochure. And finally, we regularly feed our knowledge database called WISE, where you will find some article dealing with the TCAS and with the APFD TCAS function. So the message is get connection to Airbus World. This is the end of this presentation. The objective was to brief you about the TCAS and the APFD TCAS function that we encourage you to retrofit. The APFD TCAS function has brought some significant enhancement for the operation and the different procedure must be well understood and well trained. So when you will install the APFD TCAS function on your aircraft, you will have a role to design and to provide an appropriate training to your pilots. A320 Mentor Channel. Thanks for watching.